Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. We're here at the community orchard and today we're planting trees. Normally when you buy the fruit trees, you put them in the ground right away as they come bare rooted. But this year, because of the situation, we couldn't do that. So they uh, potted them up for us and they've been here on the tables and we've been watering them every two or three days, keeping them alive. And now we're slowly putting them into the ground. We've already put two in last week and we're hoping to get more in the ground this week. Each person's going to plant a tree or two. Planting is going really well today. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, six new trees put in today, making the total nine trees in the spiral orchard. So we're just bringing out the hose now to water them in. Here's a view of our spiral orchard. We've got nine trees planted. They're all staked. We still have to uh, get the spiral wraps for the trunks and the ties that attach them to the stakes. So I'll do that probably later today. It's kind of transformed an ordinary field into an orchard. It looks fantastic with all the trees out here. The community gardens have really greened up after all that rain we got. Everything's looking really good. This is our orchard plot here, where we're growing all the little trees tall enough until we can plant them in the ground. And they're all doing really well. We've got our tamarack trees, our larches, got a birch tree there, walnut, Kentucky coffee trees, plum cherries here, and the buckthorn. So yeah, they're all getting quite tall kind of getting up to over waist height, that's for sure. So yeah, when they're tall enough, we'll dig them up and we'll put them in the ground. That'll be exciting and we'll get more on the go. After a day of planting trees, it's time to work on my own trees now. I'll be starting today by working on my ficus microcarpa, my very first bonsai that I started from a seed. The tree has been growing really well this summer. I'm getting all kinds of new roots growing in at the root base here. That's looking good. Up top, I'm getting quite an imbalance. If you look at the foliage at the front of the tree, it's uh, growing well, but the, the shoots at the back are just taking off. Today I'll need to balance the vigor in the canopy of the tree, reducing those long shoots back and kind of equalizing it out. And I've got to come up with a canopy profile. Um, I went back and I studied all my ficus tree pictures, the full-size ficus trees in nature and cities and wherever. And I, I was analyzing the top profile of the tree, the curvature to the canopy. And some are quite flat, others are quite rounded. And it all depends on how large the tree is um, how mature it is and the conditions it's growing in. It seems the ones that kind of spread out with more aerial roots, kind of uh, taking over more real estate, tend to have a flatter top to them. And the younger trees tend to have more of a dome shaped or a, uh, a rounded shape to the top of the canopy. So I'm gonna go somewhere in between a flat top and a rounded top and kind of uh, have a curvature about something like this and I think that'll do. I'm not going to defoliate the tree when I work on the branch structure today. If I did that it would take until almost fall before the new leaves grew in 
and then it would be kind of weak growing over the winter. So I want to keep lots of vigor in the tree. So I'll prune it with the leaves on. If I were going to show this tree this fall, I would definitely leaf prune it, prune the branch structure, and then let the new leaves grow back in for the show. And it would look really good, but it definitely weakens the tree. So I'm not going to do that at this time. I keep the root base of my ficus here misted at all times. I try and keep it wet throughout the day. And that really helps encourage the formation of these fine aerial roots all over the root base. I'm going to start reducing the canopy down until I get it to the right height. So I'll start by pruning back the longest shoots. So here I go, like that. I'll come out front now and have a look at the progress. I'm out front here having a look at the tree and I'm just putting my hand over the canopy. I think I want it somewhere about here. So I'm just trying to determine is my height okay or do I want to reduce that down? I probably want to reduce it down even more get a wider, more shallow canopy, I think. I'll try it anyway. By looking at the tree from the front, I've determined I want the height of my canopy to be more about here. So I'm going to take off a lot of these shoots that are sticking up, reducing it back. And it may take me a while to get it all looking good, but uh, Hopefully I'll get there slowly and surely. I'm using directional pruning, so pruning back to a leaf that's facing the direction that I want the new branch to grow in. Because at the base of every leaf is a dormant bud and the new branch will grow from that dormant bud. I'll step back and have another look again. Here's a look at the tree now. And I'm just wondering if I have the height in the right ballpark here. I'll put the tree on the spinning tree bonsai turntable. That'll make it a lot easier. The canopy is getting much closer now but I think I'm still high at the back. I'll rotate it around. I want it to look kind of uh, umbrella shaped from all angles. So I'll, I'll rotate it to the side and you can see what I mean about the back being a little high. There's the side view of the tree and you can see over here, it's not very rounded. The front is pretty good, but it just needs some off this back here. So I'll do that now. It's looking better, but it's still heavy. Still heavy on this one side here. I've got to take that back a little more. I think that's finally looking pretty good. It's got the curvature from the side view quite nice. I've got a few shoots sticking out, maybe one over here that I'll prune back. That's much better. So I'll rotate it around now. This is the back view now, and I can see it needs a bit of pruning too. That's looking good, I think, from that view. I'll go back to the front now. I'm a little heavy over on the left-hand side here, right here. I could take a bit off there. I think the umbrella shape is pretty good now. I, I like the size of it. Like I like the curvature of the top. The width of the crown looks pretty good. Um, it's a little loose kind of at the ends here. Here and here. You know, a little not very refined. But then the whole canopy isn't that refined at the moment. It's. Uh, it's going to take many, many years to get it all sorted out and get a nice individual branch structure and everything. 
And that's something I'll have to do when I defoliate the tree. It's not something you do with this kind of uh, profile type pruning. But that's, uh, you know, restore the balance of the canopy again so it can grow out a little more equally. There's one last thing I'm going to check and that's looking down from the top view. I want the canopy to be a nice oval shape. So I'll have a look at that next. I've got the tree on the ground here and I'll come above now and look down. And I don't know if I can get enough height here, but. So I can see there's, you know, a few shoots sticking out of the oval shape of the canopy. So I'll prune that back looking down from the top view. That's looking much better now. It looks like a giant oval when viewed from above. Let's look at the tree now from above. So that's it. It's uh, looking good from all views. The front view, the side view, the rear view, the top view. And if you prune your ficus like this, just, you know, a profile type pruning, you're going to get a pretty nice looking tree. Something that you can refine in the future to make it a really outstanding show tree. Here's a look at the ficus now and the canopy is looking quite nice, but I'm not done. The next step, I want to go in and do a bit of thinning in the upper canopy. So areas that have, you know, high density of leaves, I'll uh, thin them out. I'll take the older leaves out, keeping the newer ones, and that'll let more light into the canopy and you'll get a bit more of back budding. So if I want to reduce it down further in the future, I'll have all those back buds and branches to do that. My first step of thinning the canopy is I'll remove any leaves that are facing in towards the center of the tree. And I'll show you an example of that. Here's a typical ficus branch. It has leaves growing around the branch in all directions. So the ones that are facing in towards the center of the tree, I'll remove. So this one, this one, and that's about it. So all the rest of these leaves on the branch are fanning outwards and it allows more light into this section of the tree. Oh, there's one more back here. There. So this will reduce your, uh, the foliage in your canopy probably by about a third. And that'll be really healthy. It gets air circulation in there, more light to the interior of the uh, canopy. Just better for the tree in general. I've only done the first few branches out front here and I already see the difference. You can look down and you can see the trunk in there. And it doesn't spoil the appearance of the tree. Keeping those outward facing leaves, it actually makes the tree look more miniature, I think. A lot of people say that a ficus is a good beginner's tree. And it's a good beginner's tree in the fact that it's easy to keep alive. It's one of the uh, you know, trees that are suited to indoor and outdoor growing. They're, uh, yeah, they're, they're fairly easy to keep alive, but they are a tree that requires a lot of bonsai technique, especially to keep the roots in check, to get your trunk and branch structure nice and the canopy nice. So it's a beginner's tree in the fact that they are fairly easy to keep alive, but I wouldn't say it's a beginner's tree in the shaping of it and maintenance of it. It takes some good bonsai techniques to keep it well shaped and looking miniature. I'm removing all those leaves pointing towards the interior of the tree, but I'm also removing any older discolored leaves. Like here's one that's facing the right direction. It's fanning out from the tree, but you can see it's, you know, a bit sunburned. It's an older leaf when the tree went out in spring. So I'll remove all the, uh, kind of leaves that have any yellowing on them, any insect damage, anything like that, I'll remove also. Hi, Robin. How are you? Oh, you landed on the tripod. Hello. It's your feeding time, is it? Okay. I'll go feed Robin. So as I'm pruning all these leaves off, I noticed in here 
there's a branch that comes from here and it crosses across all the other branches. So this one right here. So I'm going to remove that. If you notice anything obvious like that, you know, as you open the canopy up, it's a good idea to remove it before it becomes, you know, it starts thickening up and uh, starts looking pretty ugly. All right, so off comes that branch. It's pointing a really bad direction, so I'm going to take it right off at the base. Like that. So there it is. That's gone. Here's a look at the tree now. And it looks fantastic. Um, the upper canopy just seems to flow better. You can see in the structure more. And yeah, it just has a more mature miniature look to it. So I think I'll do this technique whenever I put a ficus tree in a show removing all those inward facing leaves, removing all the discolored leaves. I'm not done yet. My next step, I've got a lot of older, really big older leaves that they're facing a good direction. It's just they're too large. I want to thin it out a little more. So I'll get rid of some of my really large older leaves. Here's an example of that right here. There's a large older leaf it's facing a good direction the color isn't too bad but it's large so I'm trimming that off I think my next step I want to look down at the tree from above and check the balance of foliage I don't want one section of the tree that has you know a lot of leaves and is really dense and another section of the tree that's lighter so I want it evenly balanced all the leaves on the tree here I am looking down at the tree once again and I'm looking for density so it's fairly dense back in here a little sparse in this section so I want to balance it so I'll remove a bit of density out of this area and the area up here and I think that'll kind of balance the uh, the foliage from above anyway so I'm a little dense here. I'll remove some leaves from here. A big one here I can remove. You can see by the leaves on the ground that I took a fair amount off. So let's look at the tree now. Here's the tree now. Looking quite nice, I think. You can see the branch structure quite easily now. The root base. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see how it looks at the end of summer when it all starts filling in again. But the canopy is looking good. It really looks nice with all the leaves fanning outwards. Really uh, gives it a miniature look. I think that's uh, a really good technique for putting your ficus in a show or any tree for that matter. The second tree I'll be working on today is a cutting of a cutting of this tree. And it's my ficus cutting of a cutting and I'll be repotting it. This tree is a cutting off of the large tree in the background. And today I'll be repotting it. It's in one of my first 3D printed pots and it was made with the biodegradable PLA plastic and you can see that it's all cracking apart, splitting, and generally just failing. So I need to repot it. I've got this really nice Japanese pot here. It's quite a bit larger than the pot it's in, but I think because of the fairly large leaves on the ficus microcarpa, I want to grow this tree a little bigger. So I think, you know, it eventually will fit this pot quite nicely. All right, I'll get the tree out of the pot. So here I go. There it goes. Looks like it's quite root bound. The next step will be to comb out the roots. I'm going to remove the drainage screen now. I think it's just one big piece in the bottom. A lot of roots have grown in to the mesh. 
Okay, that's removed. And I can start combing the bottom of the tree now. All right, I'm almost ready to wash the roots, I think. Got a lot of the soil removed and the roots raked out. Yeah, so I'll go do that now. This pot was printed with PLA plastic, which is, a, as I said, is a biodegradable plastic. If you want your pots to last, you need to make them with NGEN plastic made by ColorFab, and it's a more permanent plastic. And after three years, I've noticed no ill effects with the NGEN plastic at all. So, yeah, I, I think it'll last for probably as long as me. I'm going to position the tree in the pot now and see how it looks. All right. So there's the roots. I combed them out. They look pretty good. They're getting nice and radial. So there's the tree in the pot. There's lots of room for the roots, which is good. And I got to position it in the pot. I've placed the tree in the pot and you can see it doesn't look very balanced at all. Um, I've got sort of this secondary trunk on the left hand side here which gives a lot of weight to the left hand side of the tree so the tree needs to be moved over to the right to counterbalance that. So that looks more balanced but it looks too symmetrical. It looks like the trees in the exact center of the pot. It looks um, yeah not very dynamic it's just kind of boring looking. I've moved it over even further now Maybe that's too far. I think it's too far. I think that's pretty good there. I will be uh, pruning this side of the tree and hopefully the canopy will grow over to this side more too. So yeah, the tree isn't very refined at this point in time. I was just letting it grow and recover after, eating, after doing all those major chops in that area on the trunk. I removed a lot of branches. Yeah, so I, I think that's about where it'll be planted. I'll comb the roots out. They were kind of against the edge of the pot here, so they're a little bit strange looking. I'll have a little more room in the new pot, but not a lot on this side. So, I will prune. There's a root on top of the, of the thicker root below. And I want the roots to kind of flow nicely into the soil, so I don't want this one sticking up like that. So I'm going to remove it. Like that. This root here kind of comes off almost 90 degrees to this root, and it would be nicer if it had a nicer flow line. So I've got some roots on this side of it, so I'll prune this root back, redirecting it more in this direction. I've got some roots here that were wrapping around the pot, so I'll prune those off shorter, like that. I've got a large root on this side that kind of curves towards the front of the tree. It'd be nicer if I cut that part off, so I will. So there's the curved part that I want to develop the roots behind here so they're coming out straight instead of curving out front like that. So I'll take a section off that root. Like that. And I may have to take even more. I think I will. I'll have to come in like this. Taking a bit more off there. Like that. I'll just clean up that cut a bit. Like that. And I should get more roots growing around this cut point too. There's a root behind here that's kind of sticking up out of the soil. I'll get rid of that. There's one here comes out radially and then it hits the edge of the pot and curves around so I'll I'll reduce that back to there there's an aerial root that's dropped behind here I'm wondering I'm wondering if I need it it doesn't look very good from the front. It uh, kind of just drops behind this other root. If it was in front, would it look better? I'll try it, it may break, but... Then that spoils the nice flow from the trunk down into the root. So I'm going to get rid of that. I, uh, I like aerial roots, but it's just not in a good location. 
like that. So that's gone. It also gives it more, a little more separation from the root in this part of the uh, sort of auxiliary trunk here. There's a root kind of sticking up here. I think I better get rid of that too. That could be a problem in the future. It's a little too horizontal. It doesn't kind of flow down into the soil very well. And possibly this one too. Yeah, that one's a problem. It, it, uh, it kind of flows down nicely into the soil and then this one sticks up and ruins the flow. So I'm going to get rid of that. Like that. And then this one needs a little separating here. It's I've got to come in and remove the inner roots from here. Like that. So we have a little separation in the roots there. And you can sometimes you can put a little pebble in there to space them out, but I think it's going to stay there quite nicely. I will uh, I'm gonna reduce this one too. So they don't interfere with each other in the future like that so keeping the nice roots there there's one here again it's not very radial so I'll take off this section and develop it more in a radial pattern I'll take this remains of an aerial root off here And I think that's about it. I'll take just this one sticking out here. I'll take a bit off the tip like that. And I think that's got the root pruning done. I was looking at the pot trying to find a front. So this is beautiful on this side. This side the glaze goes over the foot a bit, which isn't a major defect. But uh, if I look at the opposite side, the feet are good. The problem is I have a little uh, bubble in the glaze here and the pot kind of, the edge of the pot kind of sags down a bit here. So I think I prefer, the glaze is a little high on this foot too. I, I think I prefer this side. It's, it's sort of more of a plain, plain front and I can live with the glaze going over the foot there a little bit. I'll put a layer of soil in the bottom of the pot now. And then I'll mound it up where the tree is going to be placed. So right about here. And then I can twist the tree down to get it to the right height. All right, I'll position the tree now. So. I'm just looking for the front of the tree. I think it's pretty well straight on like that. Maybe just a slight twist this way. Let me check that. Yeah, that looks pretty good there. The height, it's a little high. I'm going to lower it a bit. And I'll rake out the roots. Making sure I've got them nicely positioned. Because all these fine roots will become surface roots one day major surface roots. So it's important to position them while they're young. Okay, so that's looking quite good there. I'll have a look from the front. I think the tree needs to be tilted a bit. It needs to be lowered in this side a bit. More like that. I think that's quite good. I think I can uh, start adding a layer of soil on top. So here I go. And I'll just lift the tree slightly as I work the soil into the roots. Just so the roots stay flowing down nicely into the soil so they're not kind of bent up. With the roots covered up, the pot is looking quite large for the tree at the moment. But it should go quite quickly in this pot with all this room to grow. We'll probably 
double in size within a year, this tree. The soil I'm using isn't brand new soil. I, uh, I had some soil from some other tree that died, I think, cutting or something, and I reused it, so it's slightly used. It's pretty good shape, though. You can see there's some big chunks of pumice in it. Remember, I, I did that pumice experiment. I started, I bought a bag of pumice and I used it. And I didn't notice any difference. And, and if I did notice a difference, I found the pumice maybe held on to the water too much. And so, yeah, I, I, I'm, I wasn't impressed with it. I, uh, not for the price of it, that's for sure. I, uh, quite happy with the turfus and perlite mixture. Works really well for me, so I'm going to keep using it. Okay, let me have a look at the tree from the front. Not a really exciting looking tree at the moment. Um, I'll give it a water and then I'll come in and do the pruning on the upper canopy. All right, here I go with the water. Seems to be settled in there quite nicely. I'm going to prune the tree now. So I'm doing directional pruning. Shortening all these shoots. I think I'll go shorter with that one. Here's a look at the tree all pruned up now. I think it's looking much better. It uh, was getting co quite top heavy there. Um, there'll be a lot of structural pruning to come on this tree in the future, but uh, I think, you know, my next step is just to get the roots reestablished in this new pot, get them growing and the tree nice and healthy and growing strong, and then we'll go at the styling again. It's time now for today's updates. The first update for today is the Silky Babies. They're doing really, really well. Let's go in and have a look at them. Hello, everyone. I think they expected food not to be on YouTube. Have you ever seen so much fluff in all your life? And there's one little black one back there. Hello, everyone. They're still doing their little cheeps like the babies, but they're growing, growing up really well. Looking nice and fluffy. My second update for today is a bit of a story. I was standing talking to my wife yesterday, kind of swinging my watering can around, and then I got stung on the wrist, and it really, really hurt. There was this kind of big hornet on it. So I was looking around wondering, well, Where's the nest? And I found it, and it's really scary. So we're gonna go have a look at it now. And it's right under this tarp. And my wife is going to peel the tarp back, and we're gonna have a look at this hornet's nest. Oh, there it is. If you can see it in there. I don't wanna agitate them, but there it is. Super big nest, and it's molded right into the tarp. You can see the, uh, you know, there's some string attached to the tarp loop there and they've made the nest right around it and they're starting to get agitated so we're leaving. Bye. The next update is back to bonsai and here's those mystery seeds that I got in the mail and I don't know, they're not looking very tree-like to me. They uh, look more like some kind of flower or plant or something. I don't know what they are. But yeah, they don't look much like a tree. Certainly not getting a woody trunk or anything like that. It looks very fleshy. I have no idea what it is. The next update for today is my nightshade vine. And you can see it's in flower. It's got purple flowers and the centers are yellow. It looks really, really nice. 
I'll show you an example. I have one climbing on the fence over here and it's getting berries, so I'll show you that. Here's a more mature nightshade vine and you can see all the flowers on it and here you can see the berries. And they're green right now, but they'll turn a sort of an orangey red by fall. Yeah, really cool. The trunk on my nightshade vine is getting quite thick. You can see it in there. Right there. Yeah, it's got a lot of suckers coming up at the base again, but uh, I'll prune those away and make it a single trunk once again. So I'll do that now. All right, let's get rid of these little suckers down here. This is the second time I pruned the suckers away this year. They just want to grow. I'm not going to let them. Okay, that's got them cleared back. I think it's nice to be able to take a common weed and grow it into an attractive tree that flowers. So, just shows bonsai doesn't have to be expensive and you can enjoy the little things in life like these nice purple flowers. My last update for today is a big one. It's my money tree and I'm going to prune it down today. If we go underneath the tree here, down to the trunk, you can see there's a lot of buds that are already forming around this area. There's one in there, a couple up there. So it'll definitely live when I chop it back. And I'm going to chop it back quite hard today. So, here we go. I'm doing this operation midsummer, so the tree has time to recover before I bring it in for the fall. So I've got to pick a point where I want to cut this and I think I'll probably leave this section and probably cut it right up here. All right, here I go. Just like that. That's a lot of tree taken off. The other branch, I will take it off there's a node down here. I'm going to leave it longer and see what happens. So I'm going to take it off up here. Like that. I'll see what happens. Um, these things are very unpredictable, these money trees. You know, you think it's going to come out here with vigor, but sometimes the other branch takes over. Here's what I'm left with. And the story on this tree, it's a cutting. I had a uh, money tree before and it started rotting at the base. I watered it too much, I guess, in winter and it started rotting at the base. So I cut the top off it, which was still alive and not mushy, and I planted it, it as a cutting. And it wasn't very big at first, but it's growing really well now. So now I've got this cutting is larger than my original tree ever was and hopefully it'll recover quickly and grow new branches out the top of it here and we'll have a nice looking money tree in the future. It does need repotting but I won't repot it today. I'll let it get some foliage up top first. I'll give one more update. Um, this is my yellow hibiscus. It is developing flower buds. And if I open it up here, it's really hot in here. Oh. Yeah, on my yellow hibiscus there, it's looking really healthy and it's got, I think there's six flower buds on it now. So I'll be sure to show you that when it comes out in bloom. My baobab trees here are doing well. They're starting to get their first true leaves forming underneath there. So hopefully those will be popping out soon and get some energy back into the trees. Yeah, really awesome. I've received some really nice presents in the mail lately from Scott and Tom, and I just want to thank you. I'll show you uh, the goodies you sent me in an upcoming video. So thanks a lot, guys. It, it really means a lot to me. How's it going? Here's Robin for a visit. Hi, Robin. How you doing? 
Robin stopped in for a visit. Hello. Oh, you you want to be fed, don't you? Okay. There's Robin on my ficus, on the Franken ficus. Okay, okay, we'll get you fed. He follows me around like a dog. Okay, come on, come on, Robin. Come on, he wants to be fed, so. All right, we'll come over to the feeding station way over here. Come on. I gotta be careful I don't step on him. There he is, he's following me over there. Hi Robin, how are you doing? You're looking really good. Hey, just like a real bird. Look at you. You hungry? Are you hungry? Yeah, okay, come on. Let's go get him fed. So here comes your food. Oh, yum, yum, yum. There you go. Oh, isn't that good, eh? He's working on dog food can number three. Doing a good job. So Robin's really got me trained. That's all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me today on this Ficus Friday here in the Bonsai Zone. Here's a look at my ficus now, and it's looking pretty good. It's got the... Here's a look at the ficus now on the bench, but I'm not done yet. The next step I want to go... <clears throat> my first step with thinning the canopy is I'm going to remove the... <clears throat> my first step of thinning the canopy...